Good afternoon, it's Tuesday the 19th of July and we left the last big lake of South of Bordeaux and uh, we're now in the Gers region, or Gers region of France, however you pronounce it and uh, we're heading down towards sort of in between Pau and Toulouse in a big area there where we've got about half a dozen lake, a dozen lakes uh, to choose from, mainly all full night fishing as well so I thought as um, we're literally passing within 10k of this one, we'll just have a quick look. It wasn't really uh, on my list, but you know, just have a quick look. Down about a metre in depth, I suppose. But you know, we're, we're, um, we're going for something quite different now. <laughs> From uh, tidal rivers to vast inland seas um, to something just a little bit more intimate. So the, the last lake was draining, you know, because of all the catfish as well, obviously. Um, but, you know, I can walk away from there and feel quite satisfied with my results. So, uh, yeah, time to travel, get on the road and uh, have a little bit more of an adventure, a little bit more exploring and just see what else is out there. So, so anyway, onwards we go. Might visit one or two more lakes to, to uh, get to the lake that I really want to fish. Um, so I just thought I'd um, check in really, guys. Um, yeah, um, whether I've done the right thing or not moving, I don't know. But my, my heart, my head was telling me to stay, but my heart was telling me to move on and go and explore. So that's what we're doing. I follow my heart. So there we go. Catch you later, guys. Incidentally, before I leave, this lake's called uh, Lac de Charos, um, 35 hectares, they you know, look a lot bigger don't they these lakes, you know 70 acres looks a lot bigger than that, there we go. Good afternoon, it's Tuesday the 19th of July, it's 4.30 in the afternoon and uh, we've just arrived, or I've just arrived, um, had a little look around the lake, a few points of access, none are great without lo loading up the boat. So, yeah, if I can uh, fish out the back of the van, then so be it. I can't believe it, there's nobody on here. This is a lake right down in the foot of the Pyrenees. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, there's many lakes like this around here. There's, there's literally dozens. So, this is going to be my home hopefully for the next uh, three, four days. I'll give it three days, um, see what happens. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a cracking day. Um, nowhere near as hot as it has been. I think it's about 32 here today. I know that's hot for back in the UK, but it's um, pretty, pretty nice here. Um, and there's, there's just the slightest breeze and it's so cool in. Obviously still got to be careful getting sunburned. Anyway, going to get the boat out. It's the first thing I'm going to do. Get the echo sounder on there. Get out there and um, mark some spots. I think we'll actually be fishing tonight, which is a bit of a bonus. I was pretty much prepared just to uh, get down here and just camp tonight. But because we're um, out the back of the van, um, it's coming up to the best time of day to do a bit of manual labour, so uh, I think we'll be fishing. So, um, yeah, on that note, we're going to crack on. Speak to you later. Alright, good evening. Just starting to uh, get dark now. It's uh, nine, about 9.40 on uh, Tuesday, the 19th of July. The rods are out. They've been out now for a couple of hours. Four rods in good positions. Um, some lovely shells out there, so as I said before, I'm fishing from anything from sort of nine and a half feet down to 21 feet. Some beautiful ledges in between, nice string of bait all the way along. Be a bit surprised if I do get a take tonight, really. Um, gone on my usual, a little bit more, not quite all or nothing, but gone quite heavy. So yeah, so got those all out. I've had a, I've had a, a wash in the lake. I've had a shave, I've cut my hair, and I've even cooked a couple of gourmet burgers. So I have two burgers left, two roll. I've got still got a bunch of rolls. 
which have been frozen. So these rolls are still as fresh as a daisy. They've been been in my freezer, my angle freezer, three weeks nearly now. And even caught you know, a nice gourmet burger, cheeseburger with proper real British beef mince um, with cheese, onions, chopped up gherkins with a bit of tomato sauce. I needed this really, I've not been looking after myself the last sort of uh, 72 hours. So, you know, I feel like a bit like a new man again now. New man, new lake, new confidence, renew confidence. Uh, really enjoying this now. Um, you know, that big lake punished me. It really did. So, yeah, happy to be here. So, there we go. Probably the last uh, you will hear from me tonight unless I get a car. Speak to you tomorrow. Wednesday the 20th of July, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, just had a, a nice little run and uh, we've had a carpool and ready over all that bay. Not quite what I was hoping for, but it's a carp I suppose. Um, so here we go, <laughs> lovely little pristine common carp, that's probably about three pounds. Well, we just keep fishing for it. It's no worse than catfish, is it? So at least it's not a catfish of three or four pounds. So yeah, there we go. It's a start. It's a start. Well, that had to happen eventually, didn't it? You caught me in the endes. So here we are on the new lake. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon and I've had little baby fish jumping all over the swim. The rods have been knocking away. I just thought I'd throw my model mucker up and as soon as I do that of course it absolutely melts off and instantly this is no three pounder I think it's no record breaker but it's the second car so next rod along so the first rod this morning uh, was in 22 feet of water just checking I am recording yeah and this is the next rod along, this is on a snowman, either a yellow or a white pop up in about 17 feet of water. Also I did put in a lot of bait last night, but this has got a little bit of weight to it, this is a bit more ploddy. So, <coughs> when you come to new water and I've seen all these little tiny carp jump in, some of them are about a pound. And then you have a three pounder, and you think, ah. Oh, here we, here we go, what, what don't I know, you know, you find out all you can on the internet about these places. But this one's, um, find this crown like a fair fish. Very fresh little, probably about eight pounds. Yeah, I wonder if that's all that's in here. You just never know, do you? But yeah. <laughs> lovely. I think this is um, number four today. Drop one as well. Seems a little bit heavier, but truth of the matter is, it's probably about this size. Eight, nine pound. So they're just jump, jumping all over the place out there, and the rods are getting and getting knocked and having all the time. Obviously, they're doing the best. And I've just had a drop back on the other rod as well. Um, yeah, just uh, hey, there's some better fish in here. I'm sure, they are somewhere. It's just got to wait for them to come in. There we go. Number four of the day, and we've been here about 24 hours. Uh, about 7.30 now, I think, Jersey. can't remember what it is, 7.30 anyway, um, just had a, as you saw, just had that uh, near double figure common, probably the biggest yet, um, just halfway out there, I was desperate to um, get out there because there was a deer, just about got some farm marker out there, it was swimming in, I thought I'd grab the uh, 
the uh, video camera and maybe I can video it. But no sooner than I went out there, it turned arse about face and headed back for the other bank. But he's still making his way back now. He's been out there for a good, you know, 20 minutes. God, they can swim. I can just see his little head bobbing about, heading towards the far side now. Quite incredible. Uh, so, yeah, um, just so I'd done that, I had another run on the right-hand rod, so I got back in here. But the time I got back in, I struck into it. I was on for it for a couple of seconds, and then the hook pulled. Uh, another small fish, but in. Good morning. Uh, about quarter to four in the morning. I haven't had a bite all night compared to yesterday when the old rods were knocking and bouncing about all day. And we caught the, those little common carp. Well, it went dead on dusk, and this is the first run I had, and it really rattled off this one. A little bit more weight to it, still nothing special. And it's a pain in the backside because he won't stop. But we just thought we'd bring him in. And it's a 17 pound common. So he's like 10 pound, 10 whole pounds bigger than anything I've probably caught before nearly. So there we go. Um, I'd like to say it really fought well, but it didn't even fight that well. It run that much. I decided to go out in the boat for it because I was scared it went around the marker. And um, when I went out there, it then just went wild. I put it in the net to unhook it, and then it just started splashing me to hell. So a lovely four o'clock sort of wake-up call with a with a load of lake water. There we go. Double twenty mil spicy squid goo. Fish meal boilie, bottom bait. Let's get him back. Oh. Good evening. Thursday, July, uh, the 21st of July, it's about 20 past 9 in the evening. Been another very hot, balmy day. Spent lots of time swimming and catching babby carp. I um, think I've about, about, had about half a dozen today. Um, I moved uh, the markers out just a little bit more in deeper water. Um, the deeper water did produce more yesterday, the one rod that was in deep water, and it did produce a big fish through the night. So. This is what I'm gambling on tonight, but the fish moved in uh, sometime early afternoon and yeah, you know, a couple of drop takes, I think about half a dozen small carp from a little bit bigger. <laughs> Some of them sort of, I don't know, seven, eight to uh, maybe low doubles. Um, so yeah, just all sort of little peas in the pod really. So yeah. Um, Thought I'd give it the third night on here. Um, you know, now we've done that little change and uh, just see what happens tonight. If nothing happens tonight, then uh, I'm off in the morning. So uh, that is going to be the end of my uh, pioneering, you might say. Gone onto lakes that I knew nothing about as such and rivers. Um, you know, and I've done all right. Um, you know, this one is, you know, been a bit of disappointing. Um, I thought, you know, I didn't think there would be so many small fish in here. And the last take I had as a bait that's been sat out there all day. It was a, it was a 32 mil bottom bait and a white pop up, and somehow a seven or eight pound carp has managed to hang himself on it. So there you go. You know, it's not like I'm messing about with small baits. So there we go. That's, that's that, so it's a lovely evening, um, sat enjoying my signature uh, rum and coke with ice, uh, which as I've probably said many times before, is a game changer, you know, and what, what better place could you be sat by a lovely lake on a gorgeous summer's evening, just watching the sun go down behind me and uh, yeah, taking this all in with my favourite drink, so that ain't bad. So, as you can see behind me, next batch of uh, particles boiling. The lakes I'm going to now definitely respond well to, to particles. So we've got peanuts going on the boil at the minute. They've been soaking since sort of uh, yesterday morning. So they've had 36 hour soak and they get really hot in those buckets. So they literally just need bringing to the boil even the tiger nuts, so they're nearly there, they just need that bringing to the boil and they're now sitting in the uh, 
buckets and they'll carry on stewing until I need them. Maybe tomorrow, day after, all depends on how quick I pull my finger out. So yeah, usual thing, tiger nuts, peanuts, hemp, party blend, groats, maize, uh, probably something I've missed. <laughs> oh yeah, a few more boilers on soak. So a uh, little bit of a bomb site around here at the minute. Solar panels everywhere. The joys of having this modern technology. Um, but it, it is a it's an amazing place. A couple of night herons over there. Oh no, I don't know if, what they are. They night herons. But there they are. Yeah. So they're night herons. I've seen a few of those about here. A little bit more of a rarer species. Lots of ducks coming in to roost for dusk. Uh, there's lots of grebes about and egrets and normal herons. It's truly a wonderful place, it really is. Sun setting behind me. Beautiful pinky orange sky. There's a normal heron coming up now. Two herons, yeah, there they are. So yeah, it's all going on here. Truly a wonderful place. You can see why there's no other carp anglers on here now. Makes sense. But there we go, you live and you learn. Somebody's got to do it. So, there we go. Place to cut the rods this evening. Just done a little bit of a booster bait, a particle out there just to freshen it up, not much. Just using the last of my old stuff from what I boiled up on the big lake. I suppose a week or so ago now. So I've eked that out rather well, really. So yeah, so just gonna sit back and just enjoy the rest of this evening. It's my favorite, you know, everybody's favorite part of the day, I think. And uh, yeah, take it all in. This venue is one I've fished many times before, um, before I ever started videoing back in the uh, late 90s and uh, again when I started video in the uh, you know in the uh, well, I don't know I think I first done a video with Michael 2015 don't need to name the venue I won't name the venue but you all know what it will be so I think that's where I'm going next maybe there might be another big lake down in the Ariage I think it's the Ariage in the south um, but it's going to be a, a lake I'm going to look at just up the road don't think I'll fish it going to go over to the Garonne to the, my next lake um, and see what that's like if it's quiet I'll fish there if not I'll go on to another bigger lake um, which will be another big challenge um, and if that doesn't happen well I don't know Salagu I don't know I don't know um, then again I have got hankering for the river lot which when it's like this lovely shady trees and shady swims and the flies and the wasps are never too much of a bother on the river lot I don't know why but there we go so many options and uh, a lot of time still to go so uh, yeah you know still got like you know three and a half weeks so uh, yeah gonna have to go to a a uh, dealer and get some more maize and pigeon conditioner and stuff like that I'm actually all right for boilies So that's all my boilies stacked there. Four trays, still got a full bag of hemp and a little bit, a few bits and pieces, half a bag of uh, um, tigers. So I might just get some more maize. I think, yeah, I've got a good 120 kilos of uh, boilie left. So bait won't be a problem, that's for sure. Not with the places I'm going now. We're not gonna get catted out, loads of nu nuisance fish. So yeah, you know, the... Uh, I feel like the holiday is almost over, but it's a bit weird because I've never had six weeks in France before. I've had a month, in which case now it would be, well, you know, we are getting to the backer end of it, but I'm not even halfway through. So, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's the rod I've just freshened up, actually. Uh, it's all kicking off. So I just landed one, and the other one's screaming off now. 
It's alright, there's no snags out there. We're alright. That one's ready to go in for it. And uh, just landed the first mirror. So that's good. And yeah, a double, very low double, little leathery thing. There we go. Stole him up, bloody wild as hell they are. Hopefully he's tied out a little bit now. So it might go 10 pounds, but it's a mirror, not a common. God, didn't it ever scream off? So it's probably be one of the stockings that I know they put in this lake about four years ago. So uh, yeah, a little stocky really. So uh, there we go. What more can I say? Double 24 mil muscle boilers. Doing the do again as they do everywhere I go. Let's put this little one back and deal with the other one. Coming off a minute ago, would you believe it? It's another mirror. After all those commons I've had, I don't know how many I've had in the last uh, two nights. It's probably well over a dozen. And wow, it's rather pretty. Little stocky mirror again. Another one of these stockings, I should imagine. Very pretty fish, look at that. You can imagine that about three or four times bigger. Again, I suppose it's about ten pounds, maybe. You know, they said they put them in between five and seven kilos. Well, let's try the other side of that because he's really pretty. You know, you can just imagine this bad boy. I mean, he's three or four times the size. Look at that. What a peach! They do. You know, they do take some pride in putting some stock in some nice fish. Into these. Oh dear, oh, mate. Uh, I'm not. Two more in the night. Since those uh, others. I think something like that. It's just I've had enough of it now. Um, so, there you go. Another little wild comment. And they're horrible. Flappy, splashy little fucking little shit bags they are, I'll tell you. Be glad to get away from them now. They just don't stop. There you go. <laughs> yeah, not enough of this now. I need to go and find an hard water. <laughs> Friday the 22nd of July, 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, another busy night. Um, nobody can say that I'm not trying, that's for sure. So, um, I've had, since that brace, of little um, mirrors last night. I've had six more fish, had two more takes and put the rods out. And then after that, I didn't bother putting the rods out. I've still got one rod left in. Um, a mid, mid to upper double uh, common again in the night. And another lovely little peach of a mirror, which that wasn't, that was about three and a half, it was about eight pounds. Um, yeah, so another one of their so-called stockers between five and seven pound, no doubt. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's just getting better and better now that, you know, they're really on it. Uh, the, the wind's changed, it's blowing away from the arms and it's coming back up towards the, uh, the main bowl. I'm absolutely shattered, I can't be asked to move today. Um, I'd either pack up slowly today and just have a have a day or so off. I'm going to visit a few more venues because I'm down this way. Have a couple of days off. Um, I think. But I think I'm just going to stay stay for one more day. One more day. Let's just see if this wind hasn't made a bit of a difference. It's a nice wind. If there's any fish being pulled up in the uh, up in the arms, there this will bring them out. This will bring them out to me. So we'll give it one more go. Just going to relax. I'm going to have a bit of breakfast again in a minute. On that note, I'm going to finish drinking my coffee and um, a few hours after we got all the rods back out, it looks really did look really really good for it. Um, and uh, finally, uh, one of the rods tore off, tore off again, and it's another little stocky carp. A little mirror again. A little pretty little mirror barely touching 10 pounds but at least they're a little bit more interesting than the commons uh, you know this is a you know this is a 28 mil bottom bait 
with a 15 mil pop up, pineapple pop up, sticky baits. Um, Started soaked in a bit of squid goo again. It, it does seem to get the bites quicker. Maybe attracting the wrong wrong type of fish. I don't know. But um, here we go. All good fun all the time. You can you can tell when you get a, a mirror. They're just a bit more slow and ploddy. Here we go. Probably not. Definitely not ten pounds. Can't blame me for trying. Looks good for it. Just hope the next one's a big one. That's all we can do. Just keep praying, keep fishing through. There must be a couple of big ones in here somewhere. Good evening. I uh, don't know what time it is. Probably about nine o'clock Friday evening. And uh, been a bit of a quiet day today. Um, I think I might have had one or two more small commons after that mirror. Um, but that was a long time ago. Um, so just had a really good powerful run and instantly felt a little bit better. So biggest fish of the lake so far. A common and it's £19.4 ounces. Look at that. Bloody great big tails on them. Look at that. New biggest fish of the lake. What a monster. <laughs> Certainly a step in the right direction. <laughs> Look at the great big orangey yellow paddle on it they do fight they're great sport if anything else so uh here we go uh time's looming so we're going to make this the last evening already scaled everything down um so we can get away quite early in the morning we're going to quite a busy day today tomorrow searching uh, new lakes in the area and a couple of and a river as well um, which i've only been meaning to visit for 20 odd years 25 years so there we go Good morning, Saturday the 23rd of July, um, about 9 o'clock in the morning, and a uh, bit of a quiet night as far as the fishing is concerned, that last carp last night, just over £19, was the only one I had. Grit just hunting along the margins there, um, but yeah, um, an absolutely um, hell of a lot of rain last night rain and thunder to the small hours. Eventually, it eventually settled down to about, about one o'clock in the morning. I think it did start again though, actually. Um, but yeah, woke up to this beautiful, moody morning. Uh, well, we got woke up actually by a lure angler just uh, catching one of my lines. I think um, luckily he didn't cause too much problem. Um, I don't think he did anyway. But, yeah. There we go. Onwards. Gonna finish packing up the rest of the stuff. <coughs> just a little bit of tidying up to do here now. Uh, we'll be on our way. Bait prep for the next uh, week, 10 days, excuse me. Keep my mouth shut. Alright. <coughs> Good afternoon, Saturday 23rd of July. It's just gone 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, just get rid of that. Um, just wanted to um, discover the Garonne, the River Garonne. Looked at it. Oh, back in the 90s and just never ever got round to fishing it. It's not quite the spot I really, really wanted to fish. Uh, where the tarn comes into the Garonne, that's got a famous stretch. But this is another dam section of the River Garonne, uh, south of Toulouse. There's a, it's a series of dam sections down here and they are massive, great big areas. Look at that. So... Um, this is, uh, I feel, a little bit of a better spot. You have to go out there about just under two thirds of way across, and it's literally seven, seven foot, all about two thirds way across, and then it just drops steadily to from seven to sort of 15, uh, and then again to 21 foot, and then the far side's uh, 35 feet of water. So I thought I could fish this drop off a little bit better. It's a lot further than I was, 
wishing the fish, more like lake fishing. Um, so uh, I did uh, pull the boat out around the corner where the deep side was right under my margins and it was like straight down, boom, 43 feet of water and then it went out about halfway across the river. It's a little bit of a tighter spot. It's literally just around the other side of this bend, big bend. And then it just comes straight up, up into four foot of silt and weed. And it was like, don't know if I really want to be fishing a 40 foot channel. It sounds like catfish to me. So um, this allows me, it, the weed peters out even about halfway across and I can even fish sort of just near the weed in nine feet of water. So it gives me several options here. Um, so I think we're gonna give it a couple of nights and see if I can't catch a River Grand Carp. That'll be uh, four carp from four different venues I've never even fished before. That ain't bad going, but we haven't done it yet. So uh, there we go. Right, I'm gonna crack on. I've got lots and lots to do. I've got to go and get my bait sorted, markers and um, and get out there, get some spots and then get the rods on it. And hopefully we'll be fishing in the next couple of hours and enjoy a lovely evening on the River Garon. How about that? Not a bad little spot either, I must say. You know, it's uh, there's a van just up there. I could bring it down here, but I don't think there's no need to. And uh, yeah, so just lovely and sheltered from the sun. This will do for a couple of nights. Uh, yeah, right, see you later. Well, Saturday the 23rd, it's uh, about 20 past 8 in the evening and uh, there is something about sat by a river in the middle of the summer. You're always shaded by beautiful big trees and uh, yeah, there's always lots going on. A uh, world away from the big, bigger windswept lakes that I tend to normally choose to, sh to fish. Um, yeah. Um, it's uh, a lot more relaxing. Well, it should be a lot more relaxing, but um, uh, I've gone out there and um, I've, I've got my marks. Uh, the trouble is uh, the first two thirds of the, the river is, is chockers were weed and it's only about five, five to seven feet deep. And then, um, and then as you get out about two thirds away across, that's probably 140 yards. Then it drops right off, starts dropping off beautifully from sort of seven eight foot gradually down to sort of 16 feet there's a lovely lovely sort of plateau there and then again it drops off to 21 foot where it stays at around 21 to 23 feet before eventually dropping off in a far channel at about nearly 40 feet um so yeah really really confident certainly better than the 42 feet under my feet on the other spot i just didn't feel right that so um, yeah, there we go. Um, it's really, yeah, just uh, nice just to be rods out and, and just I think I can see myself giving it at least a couple of nights here. Give it a chance, work the swim a little bit and uh, see what happens, um, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd touch base one last time this evening just to share this wonderful evening. And uh, before I sign out, uh, until I catch a carp or in the morning, let's open the carp. <coughs> Good morning, Sunday the 24th of July, it's about 9.30 in the morning. Um, bit of a peaceful night, um, nothing to report really. It's going to be another amazing sunny day. Um, never heard a thing last night oh, I didn't sleep sleep the best for whatever reason um, and I, I sort of I woke up a few times in the night and then just sat there and listened for a little while um, got up once to, to answer the call of nature and shone a torch down in the margins and the, 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 the riverbed in the margins absolutely is moving with big crayfish uh, I've had a few nods and bleeps, so I'm wondering, obviously the crayfish do love the margins, but I am wondering if I've got any bait left on. So I'm going to be off out in the boat in a minute just to check the rigs, probably top up with a little bit more bait. Um, <coughs> and just uh, give it give it to you this time tomorrow. Uh, morning, uh, Monday the 25th of July. Um, 
yeah, didn't touch base yesterday because um, there was nothing really to report. My God, that was a hot day yesterday. You think sat in amongst these trees? I didn't really get the sun on me all day. Um, yeah, that was something. Um, but there was just no wind around here. The whole place was just like a bloody pressure cooker. It was just so hot. What any tiny little bit of wind that blew, it just felt like you was getting a hot, hot fan blown on you. It was really, really hard work yesterday just uh <laughs> not suffering from the heat we're about you know i think we're going to get highs of about 28 degrees today which is hot for england but you can operate in it in this uh you know in in, in this at the minute so uh yeah that's that's it i think i think it's a a, a finally a failure <laughs> so uh yeah i just don't think I'm in the right area, you know, for, for somebody like myself just to drop into a, a place like this on the river and fall on fish this time of year, especially, you know, is always going to be a bit of an outside chance. Um, so, yeah, you know, there we go. We've given it a go. We've ticked it off the list. So at least it's going to be a lovely, uh, cool day for me to pack down the rest of my gear and on to the next venue. Uh, so gonna finish the coffee um, get these rods wound in and um, and get off to the next venue so that's it really so uh, I will check in with you guys hopefully later on today right that's it Monday 26 uh, about 10:30. Uh, all packed up and um, I'm ready to go um, yeah so uh, Quick pit stop, get some more milk, and uh, on to the next venue. So, watch this space. Right, <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm laughing, um, probably because I think I'm mad. But here we go, uh, Sunday the 26th of July, and here we are at our next venue. Uh, as you can probably see, if you, there's very few of you that follow my uh, little videos online, I've uh, fished here once or twice before, so I thought it was time to uh, do a bit less exploring and um, own personal pioneering and and uh, go somewhere where I've got bags of confidence. If I don't get something decent from here, then uh, I'm going to take up golf or stick the clay pigeon shooting. So here we go, baits loaded. <laughs> Not quite got it all on there, funnily enough, but... Um, yeah, uh, what I've got, I'm only going around the corner, a uh, quarter of a mile. So uh, uh, I guess once I get camp set up uh, and whatnot, I can come back and get any food um, and anything else that I particularly need. So no big deal. Uh, the main thing is I get base set up tonight. Um, maybe even get some baits out. I don't think there's any reason why not. It's just uh, going to be... Uh, mind over matter because <laughs> i'm knackered there we go right <laughs> venue number five <laughs> cut monday the 25th of july um i'm a little bit lost for words which is um a little bit unlike me so i've got everything all set up i crashed a little bit after I got everything here, um, I got the boats unloaded and then all of a sudden I started to sort of like feel a bit dizzy. Suddenly realised I haven't really eaten today. I've been busting my ass, lugging all this shit about. So uh, I got a bivvy set up and had a, had, a, had a little snooze. Literally just crashed for about an hour. I couldn't believe it. I woke up late and it was about, well, it was about an hour and a half later. I couldn't quite believe it. So yeah, burning the candle at both ends a little bit. So uh, anyway, just sort of like got everything ready after that. I had a cup of tea and some biscuits and stuff like that and that pet me up a little bit. Felt a lot better. So, got all my rods ready. And um, waiting for the wind to die down really. Didn't, wasn't really intending on going out there uh, to place markers on those snags because I really wanted to, the wind to drop and to make sure that um, 
I put markers in the safest possible areas that I can and the closest I can get but still be safe uh, and scan the bottom to make sure there's no uh, underwater trees and, and submerged trees and that sort of thing there we go that looks a long way across there that's probably about 220 yards across there 230 it's not particularly far really so anyway I've got three rods out there anyway I think that's safe enough I have rushed them out there a little bit um but the main the main thing is uh i've got a lot of bait out there and i'm just going to sit on it i'm going to go and get a book and have a read good morning it's wednesday the 27th of july it's about uh, quarter to nine in the morning um uh, don't think i uh, updated yesterday missed the whole day um nothing much on the fishing fronts really happened um Let's move that up again. Shut it down. Come up. Um, yeah, it's it's been trying to say the least. Uh, this lake is <coughs> probably one of the most brutal and testing that I've ever fished. Um, it's always got an horrible side wind on it, uh, which makes um, placing baits tricky in its own right. Um, you know, the wind is relentless on here I, I, I forget every time how bad it is you know last time I fished it in the autumn of 2018 I think it was um, you know we actually uh, we, we moved well I moved off a fish up to another area which was a bit more comfortable and then blank for three days before we moved off um, so that was a bit frustrating um, but uh, yeah um, getting back on track yesterday um, I got all my rigs out reasonably well um, run, but yeah sat here fishing away yesterday in, in my bivvy and all of a sudden uh, six mini catamarans training catamarans with a bunch of kids on them all all come straight across in front of me within about 30 yards to cut the corner off to go in the bay and wiped out two of my rods and then followed by the instructor behind who got wasn't got a very hard stare he was that close and I proceeded to stand there with both hands on the spools while the uh, the, light, the, the leads dragged off the spots and finally made them that made their way to the uh, to the catamarans before they broke off on them both uh, so that was a bit frustrating so the rest of the afternoon I was only fishing with two rods one in the margins and, and one on the far side which I think got dragged as well so I sat waiting for the uh, wind to die down enough so I could get the rods out there really comfortably uh, the wind dropped right down last night it was lovely and it's not too bad today to be fair I think it's moved around a little bit to the east which makes things a lot easier so when I got the first rod out, absolutely golden, really, really happy with it, um, really safe, uh, closest to the snags, it, on the right depth of water that I feel that's correct, and uh, yeah, that was good. Come back, got the second rod, got out to the mark, and all of a sudden I lost all my forward uh, drive on me Minn Kota. Uh, all I had was the three reverse gears, uh, which are pretty much useless for any propulsion really they're good just for trimming when you're on the spot that's about it just to hold you there so with that didn't drop the rod come back and managed to luckily with that one you can turn it all the way around 180 so I can still drive forwards but in reverse gears getting a, a very very slow rate battling against the wind uh, which then decided to blow up a little bit it took me a good 20 minutes to get back I hadn't even got my oars in in, in my little boat which is a, a bit of a novice mistake just in case anything like that ever happens you know at least I can row back to base uh, yeah so um, yeah so I'm without an electric motor at the minute obviously but I need another motor that one's about 13 years old I, I refurbed it about three years ago four years ago I put a new control unit on it which I don't think was a, a genuine min coat apart. Couldn't find one for that model then. Uh, the Traxxas models has obviously moved on a lot now. They're digital now. 
So I'm just about to go shopping in a minute. Going to wind the rods in and go into Toulouse about an hour away and uh, go to Pacific Pesh and uh, go and park um, with probably around uh, 600 quid uh, for a new Minn Kota Traxxas 45. So, uh, you know, the other one done me really, really well and had a lot of abuse for, for so long. I think I'll go for the same one. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, again, you know, public lake carp fishing, it is massively testing and, and I'm sure it'll all be worthwhile when and if I catch a carp, a good one. So yeah, um, but at the minute last night I just obviously just dropped them all in the margins and to be fair, the margins here are okay. They drop off pretty deep though. They're sort of like 30 foot deep here pretty quickly. And I feel like it's not the sort of spot that you can really trap carp. I think if carp are coming around here, they're really just moving through. Yeah, it might get lucky and one might decide to dip down and have a little feed, but yeah, it's not really the spot that I'd wish to fish. I'm sure I had a drop aborted take. I think something got away with one of them. I don't know, Brooks take um, yesterday morning. It really rattled it, you know, the rod just bounce smack down real hard and it just popped out the clip which is about all it can do and the, and the anger dropped off but there was nothing there so it just yeah it could only have been a, a carp I would imagine that could really stump the rod that hard at sort of about 180 yards or so so there we go so it's positive in one straight you see it in one, one sort of thing anyway so there we go anyway not for my bubbling on, I'm off, getting shopping.